Hello. My question for you this week is, what does it mean to seek the kingdom? I want to start with this verse today. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13 in the Amplified Version, contains an amazing promise to encourage us in our study and meditation of His Word. The Lord simply says to us, Then, with a deep longing, you will seek me as a vital necessity, and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. And that's why I asked the question this week. So, I want to tell you something. The message that I had written for this week with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course, made me feel slightly uneasy, simply because it's kind of a plateful of salt. <laughs> and uh, I don't know about you, but, you know, I know we need salt. As I pondered and perhaps maybe thinking about rewriting some of it to make it a little bit easier to digest, the Holy Spirit immediately gave me the following guidance through this Bible verse. He gave me Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. And I'll read it from the King James Version. It says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. This was from the Apostle Paul. And the Holy Spirit reminded me of everything he's shown me so far. Like the Apostle Paul, I must speak the truth, as is, no sugarcoating, and press on towards the high calling that God has given me. I'm in training at the moment, so I, it's, a lot of things are new to me here. There's way too much at stake for me to try to water things down. If you can't handle the truth of God, then I encourage you to pray for Him to enlighten you about all this and I mean it. We're all different. We're all at different levels of maturity in our faith. What's frightening is that most Christians, and I'm speaking for myself as well, are in kindergarten instead of having graduated from university. I didn't realize how bad it was. I'm a bond servant to Yahweh God. He has given me a number of tasks. I need to do those in this hour. I serve our Father alone. I gladly do it because I love Him most of all. He is my Father. So this said, I will deliver the message as written originally. I pray that you will seek Him very seriously after hearing this message. So I ask you to pray about this because there's a lot going on in the world. We really need to step up our education. At times, when you read the Bible, you might feel like these events happened such a long time ago that you can't really feel the full depth and meaning of the stories that you're reading. And you might also feel that perhaps your life in today's world um, doesn't connect with those people of the past. Have you ever felt like that? I would read the stories sometimes and, and it, it reads like a story, but it was reality. And so people back then heard God speak to them. Have you ever heard His voice yet? It will transform you once you do. It's really important to understand our history. The history of the world matters. The history depicted in the Bible is critical. And yet we happily follow the traditions of man instead of the truth of our Creator, Yahweh God. He is the only one that matters when it comes to your life. Think about that for a moment. His will, His command, His teaching, His love, His guidance, His plan for your life. Think about that. All of this is in the Bible, yet many don't read it and don't meditate on it daily. I know I didn't, and if I had diligently seeked Him and the truth of our Father earlier in my life, things would have been much different and much better. Thankfully, oh, thankfully, God 
can use my disobedience of the past to help me teach the word today. I have experience in what I'm talking about. I have experience in what not to do. <laughs> this experience is real. It's, it's my own. And as I'm looking around, I am seeing that I'm not alone in, in doing things this way. You see, man has been controlled and lied to in countless ways since the beginning of time. And that's why knowing the word of Yahweh, God, is the single most important thing for each one of us to study. And this is key. More importantly, apply the word to our daily life. Actually take action on it. Most of what's being taught in schools and shown on television. It's either complete lies, half-truths, or agendas from a variety of different factions that are not of God. They took the Bible and Bible study out of schools. That was on purpose. They also took it out of government proceedings and meetings and sessions decades ago. This was all for a reason. And look how many lost people and lost leaders we have today. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 to 34, it's written, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For, after all, these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that he has, he, ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It says so right there in verse 33. And it continues on and says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things for itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. In verse 33, Jesus clearly says that we must first seek God's kingdom. Yet society is literally pushing away and pushing out of life the very book that contains the truth of God. So what happens? What happens in your own personal life? That's what happened in my life. You kind of push it aside. And seeking first the kingdom of God means putting God first when we worship Him, when we praise Him, thank Him, trust Him, and, this is very key, rely on Him rather than ourselves. We seek God first when we turn to Him every moment of the day for comfort, for strength, and reassurance. We acknowledge who He is and His plans for our lives. I never planned my life with thinking about God's plan for mine. I never did that before. But in order to benefit from the full power of God, we must first be teachable. We must meditate on the Word, acknowledge that we've likely been misled. We must be open to learning the truth and repent of our sins. Don't let pride get in the way. A few years ago, the Holy Spirit put in my heart to share the hard truth about all of the untruthful things of man concerning the popular celebrations such as Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day, Easter, and that's just to name a few. Basically, things that are misleading his children in this day and age. And what I found out is that most people, they really don't want to hear the truth. You know why? Because they've been brainwashed by the system into believing that what they're celebrating is in full accord with God. And it's truly not. And that's the problem. And that's why he's asking me to speak about this. In Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, my people perish from lack of knowledge. And because you have rejected the knowledge, I will also reject you. Do you think God is joking? He doesn't joke around. All of the celebrations of man are not at all, and I mean not at all, in accordance to Yahweh God, like period. There's no ifs and buts about it. 
So it turns out that it's a much bigger problem that I had realized at the time when he first started asking me. You see, the problem is not the lack of information available out there, but rather that most people are not teachable or they don't want to spend the time meditating on the truth. I was like that too. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not judging anyone. No matter what we share for information, no matter the variety of sources, the Bible itself and sound doctrine teachings from other more established Bible teachers than I am, like far more established than me, people's eyes and ears are firmly closed. Mine were too. Last fall, the Holy Spirit told me that this year I really had to step it up and be persistent and insistent. And I thought, okay, no problem. And he's like, oh, we're just beginning here. Why was he asking me to be so salty? <laughs> like seriously, right? I wasn't sure at the time, but I told him I was all in because I'm obedient to him alone. I do what he asks me to do. In between that time and now, he's told me more things about all this and why it was so important. So I understand far better now in regards to our own future. But I has a, I is, I've been observing many people, a variety of people and a variety of backgrounds and their reactions and comments. And over time, all this has really painted a clearer picture for me. I mean... Like in the past, I really wasn't teachable. I was filled with what I call the know-it-all syndrome, the religious affiliation syndrome. Instead of being filled with the Word of God and truly studying the Word for myself, by myself, and pondering on it and meditating on it, and being obedient to Him alone. Pride, overconfidence, dismissive attitude, lack of knowledge, refusing to take the time to read information that was new to me, but not new in general, and it was from God. Not wanting to change even if I had some doubts about certain things because they didn't make sense or add up. Like a resurrection process where the days mentioned by my church leaders didn't add up to what was written in the Bible in terms of numbers of days. That should have been a warning sign right there. But I dismissed it. You know why? Because changing my ways was too much of an effort. It would upset my apple cart. So I just kind of blindly went with the flow and cruised along on automatic drive. And that's what I see a lot of people doing. And instead of stopping and actually taking the time to examine the data that was presented to me, I just brushed it off based on what I had heard over time. Things like the celebrations of the feast days of the Lord God, not the Jews, were just for the Jewish people. No, not for me. You know, that, that, that's the stuff of the Jewish people. That's not for me. But And it made me feel like, well, I didn't belong to that, so... And we were told all the truths by our so-called church leaders, you know, and those church leaders are men and they are greatly grieved by Yahweh God with their unsound teachings and behavior. Instead of stopping and actually taking the time to examine the data, I just brushed it off based on what I had heard over time. Things like the celebrations of the feast days of the Lord God. It's not the feast days of the Jews. I was told that it was just for the Jewish people and not for me. I didn't belong. That's what we were told by our church leaders. Dismissive attitude, the lack of knowledge, refusing to take the time to read information that was new to me, but not new in general, and it was from God. Not wanting to change, even if I had some doubts about certain things, because they didn't make sense. Like a resurrection process during Easter, where the days mentioned by my church leaders didn't add up to what was written in the Bible. Changing my ways was way too much of an effort, because it would upset the apple cart. Hmm my apple cart. So what do we do then? We blindly go with the flow and cruise along on automatic drive. Instead of stopping 
and actually taking the time to examine the data, I just brushed it off based on what I had heard over time. Things like, well, the celebrations of the feast days of the Lord God, and I'm not just for the Jews, you know, they were just for the Jewish people. They weren't for me. I didn't belong in those celebrations. I was told that my church leaders knew the truth to listen to them and not question that. And they knew better, right? They were the educated ones, right? So don't question them. Unfortunately, these clergymen have greatly grieved God with their unsound teachings and behaviors. Yet we still listen to them. And I'm not saying that everybody's bad in the pulpit. No. I'm not here to judge any of that. God will take care of them and he knows exactly what they're doing and he knows and that's for him to deal with, okay? However, we are to call when there's incomplete teachings, when there's false teachings that are misleading people. That is an issue that we must raise. And you know, the only way that you can really wake up and... Start understanding that maybe not everything that's coming out of certain leaders' mouth in terms of the Bible and the traditions, where they incorporate the traditions of men, the only way to really understand what's going on and see when something doesn't sound right is to know your Bible. And it's to meditate on the Word. I didn't take time to do that. I read. I read some chapters. I read some books of the Bible. But I didn't take time to actually seek the truth. And if something didn't quite add up, instead of being lazy and brushing it off, I should have seeked for the truth. Tonight, I want to encourage you to seek the truth and to start reading the Bible for yourself and to start meditating on the Word of God. I will see you next time. In the meantime, start looking things up about Easter, about Ishtar, about Passover, the Pentecost, and all the feasts of the Lord God. They are not just for the Jews. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time. <music>